Welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 9, 6, and 4. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you've come to the right place, so hit that subscribe button down below the video. In today's video, I will be doing an overview of Hewitt Homeschooling's Lightning Literature and Composition for Grade 1. Now, I used this this year for my third grader, and I loved it. I loved their book selections. I loved the way they progressed through reading comprehension, grammar, and composition. So I was excited to try to use it for my rising hybrid first slash second grader next year. My middle daughter is six years old. She only turned seven in the middle of the school year. And she has just now started to become more fluent in reading, so I didn't want to stress her out with a second grade composition level book. So I'm going to go ahead and try grade one. In the coming weeks, I will be showing you Lightning Literature and Compositions grade two as well. So stay tuned for that. Now, I actually haven't picked up all the books for the level. There's significantly more than this, but these are some of the ones that I've picked up and I will just run through those right now so you can see, and then I'll go through the rest. So from what I have around the house, I already have Harold and the Purple Crayon, the story about Ping, Frog and Toad are friends, Madeline, the story of Ferdinand, the snowy day, the important book by Margaret Wise Brown. I also have La Casa Adormecida, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that very well because my Spanish pronunciation is not great, but I would love my, my kids to learn Spanish better. I actually took Spanish all the way through AP Spanish, and I still understand it very well, but I don't practice speaking it very much. And I happen to have the Spanish version of this. Of course, the curriculum actually calls for the English version, which we might get from the library. But I thought we would read it in Spanish as well, since I have it. And then this book actually contains The Tale of Peter Rabbit, which is another one of the required reading books for level one. When you go onto HewittHomeschooling.com, you have the option of purchasing the entire set, which comes with the teacher's guide, the student workbook, and all the readers. Or you can just purchase the teacher's guide, or just the student workbook, or just a set with the two of them together, which is what I did. I didn't purchase the books because I figured that I had a lot of them already and I could also find a lot of them in thrift stores or on thriftbooks.com, etc. Bookoutlet.com is another great site, by the way, that I've been using recently. I'm going to flip through both of them really fast so you can see the formatting of each. The way Hewitt Homeschooling formats a teacher's guide is very basic and simplistic. They don't waste very much space. There's not very much white room. Um, if a lesson ends in the middle of a page, they just continue on to the next one. And it's very um, small font and everything is in here for you. However, the student workbook is as different as can be from the teacher guide because as you can see, the font is quite large, it's very colorful, they don't ask the student to write over much, especially at this age. So I don't want you to be scared when I show you the teacher guide about how the work looks like for the student. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the teacher guide first. Now the teacher guide is written by Elizabeth Cometh, the same exact author as the third grade level, so I have very high hopes. I really liked her attitude about literature and just how she focused on developing the student's interest in the story and interest in, in literature before nitpicking about grammatical error and composition ability. Here you have the table of contents and you can see this is a 36 week program and includes a variety of different books. Level one actually includes 36 different books as far as I can tell and they are The Herald and the Purple Crayon, Madeline, The Snowy Day, Caps for Sale, Chickens Aren't the Only Ones, Umbrella, The Important Book, Joseph Had a Little Overcoat, The Napping House, which is La Casa Adormecida, the Tale of Peter Rabbit, The Hello Goodbye Window, Grandfather's Journey, Dr. DeSoto, Frog and Toad Are Friends, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, The Story of Ferdinand, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, Mother Goose Rhymes, Mabella the Clever, Make Way for Ducklings, Stella Luna, Chester's Way, The Story About Ping, Mouse Soup, Bill and Pete to the Rescue, Best Friends for Francis, Always Room for One More, Tiki Tiki Tembo, Millions of Cats, Curious George Flies a Kite, Babar the King, This is London, Mike Mulligan and a Steam Shovel, How Drufus the Dragon Lost His Head, The Big Orange Splot, and Wabi Sabi. 
So 36 different books. I actually have some of these scattered about. Like I know I have Mother Goose Rhyme somewhere. I know I have Stella Luna somewhere and Mouse Soup too. So I have to dig through my kids' bookshelves and find those. The teacher's guide acknowledges that children's reading ability at this stage definitely varies. So some children doing this guide won't be reading yet. And reading aloud to your child is always permissible in the series regardless of the grade level or the child's reading ability. In fact, even in grade three, some of the books we read aloud together and some of the books my son read on his own. And I just sort of gauge how his mood was and where he was in terms of his other work and emotionally, etc. When I when I did that. So the book very much lends itself to either or. Or read aloud or reader. If your student is not writing yet, it is fine for the student to dictate the answers to you. So one of my favorite things about this curriculum author is that she really does honor the student and her focus is on developing love of literature and an understanding of grammar and mechanics and starting out giving skills for composition. It is not so much to beat the student over the head with what they don't know. It's much more about encouraging them to learn, encouraging them to enjoy the process of what literature can be. Every single lesson is split out into three main parts, the reading, the grammar and the mechanics, and then the composition. And she gives you very detailed instructions for every single section. I used a composition book last year for um, our writing assignments and we did a lot of typing as well when we did our final drafts and that worked out really well for me so I would just print out the final draft and then cut it out and glue it into our composition book and all of our pre-draft work was done in the composition book. There's also optional portions that she recommends like a reading journal pages at the end of each week there's a student response to the book and it's really optional. My son hates doing pages like that like what do you think of the story and what is your favorite line so I never really made him do it but if you'd like to they are here available to you on day three of every week she also asks the student to write a few words in their dictionary pages again I did not do this for my third grader but I might do it for my first grader because she has a very different personality and she'd like the idea of keeping dictionary pages there's also alphabet and sentence sheets here and on day four, the literary lesson is always to read an Aesop's fable. So that just continues throughout the year. So as the student guide continues, you can see here that she splits out for you day one, day two, day three, and day four. So on day one, you get some inferential and literal comprehension questions. There's also a grammar and mechanics exercise. And there's usually a very entry-level composition assignment, usually a brainstorming step or choosing a topic, etc. On day two, you have the choice whether to read the book again or not. Depending on the kid's interest, you'll probably read it again or not in any case. And that's narration day. So that's a very Charlotte Mason concept, right? Have your child retell as much of the book as they can remember to you. And then you go on and talk about different elements, story elements, like the story, the characters, the setting, external details, internal details, and the conflict. So you're just really dropping those words casually in. Obviously, for a first grader, you might not really talk about external details versus internal details. But I think introducing the concept of characters and setting and conflict is appropriate. On day two, you again have a grammar and mechanics exercise, and then you have further brainstorming for composition or gathering details or basic outlining of ideas or mind mapping. You also have a reading journal where you can write or dictate three sentences for you. What is the story about? What do I think of the story? And they choose their favorite sentence from the book to copy. On day three, again, you can choose whether to read it aloud or not. And there's some evaluation questions for you to ask your child. And then there's a break from the weekly grammar topic. And instead, you enter words into the dictionary pages and complete either an alphabet or sentence worksheet. If this is too much for your student, again, she acknowledges that all of this is really optional, especially if you're doing a separate vocab pro program. On day three is generally when students write their rough draft, and on day four is when they complete their rough draft or at least specifically do another step in the composition process. Day five in this program is generally a free day, so you can take it off or you can just extend the lessons out into five days, and that's really up to you. So every single week has this format where you have this cover page where it says week one at a glance. It tells you the book for the week. It tells you the fable for the week. 
any materials you might need, um, what you might need for the alphabet page, what you might do for grammar and mechanics, and what you're writing in composition. So here it's a story based on an existing picture or a picture the student has drawn. And then it launches right in with day one, literature. It'll tell you what to read up here, and then it'll give you some comprehension questions. You'll notice that the answers are written in parentheses right here. When you get to the grammar mechanics section, it lets you know exactly what the objective for that lesson is and it also includes the answers for you. In the composition section, she really does walk you through exactly what you're going to do for composition and she often will give you a section on how to do it more gently and how to do it with more challenge. So depending on where your student falls and then it launches into day two and the different story elements grammar and mechanics again and composition and you'll see here again she says if you're going to do it more gently or for more challenge it gives you a little instruction for the reading journal and so on and so forth so I'm just going to flip through this a little bit so that you can see how it's laid out you'll see here on day five this is a free day if you choose but she does give you an option to extend the lesson and that includes different books as well as different activities. Like here it says explore colors using a color wheel, explore one color to create a picture using a multimedia approach. So she gives you different activities that you can do. And the book continues in a very, very similar fashion all the way throughout. So I'm just gonna quickly flip through so you can get an idea of how this is laid out. But as you can tell, as I mentioned before, there's very little wasted space. It's very clear. Um, you'll notice here she does do some sentence diagramming and the answer keys for the sentence diagramming are also very clear. I like how her formatting stays the same throughout. It's very easy to understand and follow. I never had to flip back and forth. You just progress straight through. At the end of the book, there is a section on alphabets and handwriting, and they also provide you some charts as well as a little guide for handwriting and proper positioning and some pages that you can Xerox or copy if you want to use them. And so see here, you can see that the lines get smaller. I personally recommend just buying a Mead preschool type of workbook that has a clear space at the top and, and writing um, lines at the bottom and that affords children at this age an opportunity to draw and write at the same time in one composition notebook. So next I'm going to show you the student workbook and let me just tell you as a mom of a child with ADHD my third grader really enjoyed the student workbook that he used for third grade. The student workbook does not go into heavy detail and it does not beat the child over the head with something they might have already mastered. And that was something my son really appreciated. The student workbook is hole punched as you can see right along the top. So if you wanted to tear these pages out and put them into a notebook for the week or something, that's really easy to do. Here you have the table of contents and right from the table of contents, you can see that the color has shown up in the student workbook and each of the different books has a different color. And week one has this big full page color illustration. The workbooks are organized such that you have some information at the top with directions, you have an example that's highlighted, and then you have very few problems to demonstrate that you understand the information. The next page goes on on a completely separate page, which I appreciate. So if you are tearing these pages out, day one, is a freestanding page, which is a nice thing if you are taking these pages out per day. So day two includes a story that you have to correct or edit as if you're the editor. And again, it's not very extensive. Day three has those journaling pages where you can write what the story is about. Because it includes more information, it just goes on to the back of the page here, what I think of the story and my favorite sentence. And then you also have this alphabet page of colors where you can fill in a color for each letter of the alphabet. And again, that's double-sided. Day four has fill in the blank with any names you want and the sentence with a period. So again, we're not straining the student. And then you're into week two and the second book. So I'm gonna flip through this a little bit faster for you from the back. Here you have the dictionary pages. So here for the letter M, they'll give you one example, but there's a page for every single letter there in the back. But here you have, this is week 36. So you can see it's a lot more complicated by then. But again, you're not straining the student. The amount of work per day really hasn't increased by that much. Every single book has a different color. So it's very easy to tell 
in that margin bar when you've switched to another book and another activity. There's a variety of different activities that they ask you to do. There's letters, there's fill in the blank, there's pictures and vocab matching. There's some grammatical correction. Here you have a sentence puzzle. So there's contractions. There's letters and practice. Here you're underlying all the pronouns. Write one sentence that ends in a question mark. Here you're practicing commas, more sentence puzzles. There's some mazes. Writing words that rhyme with each word. Here you have adjectives and a little bit of sentence diagramming practice. Writing verbs. Capitalization. Compound words. Different senses. Exclamation points and periods. So I really am excited to use this with my student. I think it'll be definitely on grade level for her. We might be able to move a little bit faster than one book a week for her. And if we do, that's fine. I'll follow at her pace and see how it goes. But um, I am not in a rush. And I think that this is just perfect for a newly fluent student. And remember, if your student isn't fluent yet, that is okay too, because it is completely okay to have your student dictate the answers to you if they're not so comfortable writing yet. Um, I really do suggest if you have a reluctant writer, by the way, who does know how to spell, who does know how to read, to give them the option of typing. For my son, that really did help a lot. So again, there's 36 different books. These are some of the ones that I have included and I am excited to use this curriculum and in a couple of weeks I will be showing you grade two so if you definitely want to see that a little bit faster than that let me know and I will move it up my queue. As always I appreciate your time thank you so much for spending some of it with me and I wish you guys the very best day.